talking to Thomas under the table over there. He's decided to join us. Um, all right. Hi, everybody. Mary from Country Chic Paint here, and this is my sidekick, Tommy. Um, dude, stay away. <laughs> Thanks for joining the YouTube live today. I'm going to be doing this pedestal or tier table project in the color soiree. Um, just want to go over a little bit about the prep and give everybody a couple seconds to join. I think he's going to be here the whole time, maybe. <laughs> Uh, let me know where you guys are coming from. I always like to know. Um, share a comment. Um, if you've seen any of the other videos, always interested. Oh, hey, Brandon. All right. Make sure I actually took the seal. Good. Not a brand new one. I hate opening jars in front of people. I'm afraid of getting it on myself when it's brand new. Uh, so this is Soiree. This is that really nice color that I was talking about um, in the Instagram teaser this morning going to be doing this color on this table. I've already given it a really good sand. If you saw the picture of it before um, on our social media, it had a bit of a dark varnish. I just uh, took a sander to that really nice. I actually kind of like the way it looks right now, just all sanded up and distressed like this, but I do want to lighten it up. Um, I do want a painted look. It is a great little display table, so I think could even have a whole bunch of paints on here one day. So just going to dress it up. And it does want to note that it does have one of those little faux inlay things. This is not real leather. This isn't even imitation. It's very hard and plasticky. I tried giving it a scuff sand and it just went to this like pale color so you can strip it. Um, I just put a really quick coat of clear bonding primer uh, on top. Where's the primer? Uh, so this is what our primer looks like just in a squeeze bottle for me. Uh, we do have jars on the website. It is just kind of a murky liquid but you use a sponge and that will work on tricky surfaces like that. This is this wasn't porous at all on the top so just wanted to share that prep step. If you've used primer before let me know. Oh got somebody from Princeton, Texas. Thank you so much for watching. Glad you like the paint. Um, all right just gonna get started here because I want to see if I can do two coats. I've got my handy uh, 1.5 oval brush from the paint line. Love it. There's also a two inch if you want to cover more ground quicker. I'm just going to start with the top. I'm going to go right over everything. Um, I'm kind of going to do a rustic farmhouse style. I have a stencil in mind that I want to add to it as well. We'll see where that takes us. <laughs> That's Thomas meowing in the background. Apologies. It's probably breakfast time. Again, he eats like a hobbit several times a day. Um, I do want to keep my brush strokes pretty uniform and um, all in one direction. So even though it is a nice uh, round surface, I am just going to go straight across. Nothing fancy. If you want to create texture, oh, I hear him scratching my couch. Oh boy. Um, if you want to create texture, you can do uh, cross hatching strokes. Um, that's great for a farmhouse look. I'm just using the uh, bit on the lid here. It's a brand new jar. I just shook it and stir it. Love that brand new jar feel. Um, oh, also, just for watching, a little late here, um, we are doing a giveaway in this one that's uh, $50 off of our website, countrysheetpaint.com or .ca. All you have to do is comment in the comments below of this video um, for the next 24 hours, and then we're going to draw a name and pick a lucky winner and contact you on YouTube. Then you have some, some shopping money, maybe start a project. No particular question today, just uh, let me know where you're from maybe, if you've ever used Soiree, um, what color you like of our paints. We will just be picking a comment. It's pretty warm in here today, so the paint's drying very quickly. Um, furniture paint is thicker than something like a latex or a wall paint, so it covers really well, but you've got to work a little quickly if you don't want to overwork it when you're working in spring heat. <laughs> Just going all the way around here. One second. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, just coming back around. 
to the other side. There is a bit of the old stain on here. I wasn't able to get it all off. I wasn't too worried about it. covering quite nicely. Mm. I've just got paint in the face. So a nice thin coat is always best for your first one. Um, gives it the best chance to adhere, dries really nice. I'm going to get the underside here, just where anybody would have been looking. want to use the, uh, the painting sponge that works great for spindles like this but I don't feel like washing a lot of things today so I'm just going to use the same applicator the whole way through let me know what you guys think of the color so far it's a, it's a very light color we also have pop the bubbly I'd say they're kind of like brother sister or something like that um, pop the bubbly is very very light and Soiree is just a bit darker than that, but I like this one on everything. Oops, don't want to knock it over. Now I want to be adding, I, I want to add some Smoky Quartz Glaze to the end of this project, so I don't mind if it's too messy um, of my brush strokes because that texture is going to be, um, I'm going to show it off with the glaze. So once I put on a little brown glaze on top of all of this, it's going to settle into the grooves, um, kind of lightly tint the paint where I applied it, and give it that rustic, weathered, farmhouse kind of look. Just working through all the sections though first. Nice solid wood. Um, this piece is actually very similar to this piece, which was uh, yesterday's project. Um, that's cranberry sauce and our smoky quartz and graphite glaze. Yesterday I tough coated it. Um, it's got the same feet. I'm pretty sure this is um, the same design. A Fife, I believe, Duncan Fife design. So they're all over the place. And nice solid wood. Oops, getting stuck under there. <laughs> we do have a short handle brush if you are finding that the oval long handle brush is kind of impeding your work or you could use the sponge to get into those other spots. I think we can still do this though. Oh, buddy. You're pushing all the buttons this morning. Come on, no, no. Cat's running all over the place today. It's spring, everybody wants to do something. you've got a uh, nice sanded wood like this where it's all bare down to the finish um, to the raw wood it might be a fun idea to just water some of this paint down and do a whitewash I was kind of thinking that um, I did want to do just show off a few more products though so um, not today but if you have any kind of raw wood pieces like this or the sand the um, stain was really easy to get off or you had a um, paint stripper or stain remover um, go ahead and do like a whitewash because that's really fun and very easy to do. We have a tutorial on our website. This would have been a good one to do. But I am very excited to do the other idea. Not too worried if I can see through the wood. Um, I'm going to be doing two coats probably. Um, Soiree has really good coverage and this wood is soaking it right up so no trouble with adherence. Um, just going to do one quick patch up. The handle's really giving me some trouble right now. <laughs> That's all right. Drying nice and fast. I want to make sure I get right into the crevices. Sorry, we've got some questions here. Let me answer some of those. Um, do I ever spritz while painting when the weather is warm? Uh, yes, I do. Sometimes it helps to work with a wet brush. Um, just have it damp before you uh, dip in. Um, I like to paint outside a lot. Try and stay away from right underneath the sun because that's just that might uh, dry up your paint too fast. You can get crackling, unless that's the look you're going for. 
Um, but yes, definitely if you want to use a spray bottle while you work, sometimes if you spritz the paint, um, you might end up drawing back a layer and getting this cool spotted look. I actually have an example. Um, I do it all the time on purpose. But you might be surprised if you just want to keep your piece wet. Um, if you're not careful, or if you want this, um, you'll get this kind of effect where you spray and then brush it. It kind of takes off that second layer that you just applied and gives it that cool, bubbly, distressed look. So if you're going for that, spray the wet paint um, or just keep the brush damp while you're working. That's pretty good if it's too warm out. Or you can always just add a little bit of water to the paint if you find it's thickening up. That's also a good hack if you're working with paint that is older. Um, say you got like half a jar left but it's a little dry at the bottom, add just a touch of water. Um, I spritz water in the paint um, all the time. If you make it too watery though, that's when you end up making washes and it's not as pigmented. So just uh, look out for that. Just going around the back end here. Thanks, Lynette. Glad you like the table. Um, again, this is my mom's. <laughs> she gave me this piece to work on. Haven't uh, really gone out looking for pieces right now. I do have a couple of big desks to work on that I'd like to show someday, but got some prep on those to do still. Oh, this is drying really nicely. Um, oh, got another question. Uh, Beth says, is glaze different from antiquing wax? Yes, it is. Um, it's a similar look. If you want to see how these look, uh, glaze versus wax, take a look at the sample finishes page on countryshakepaint.com. Um, we did a whole bunch of popular swatches on baseboards that show you um, how it settles into grooves. They look a little different. I'd say it's the same kind of brown, same tone. Um, glaze, however, is a water-based uh, brush-on wipe-off product, whereas wax is a, it's a wax, it's oil-based, and it's a, it's a buff-on product until it's nice and smooth. You get a nice subtle effect, you can also get that with glaze. Sometimes folks find that they get a streakier look with glaze, if that's what you're going for, definitely. Um, wax can be, it, it offers just more of that like old-fashioned look, but just depends on how you use both. Um, keep in mind, wax again is an oil and our top coats like clear coat and tough coat are water-based, so you can't um, really put those on top of wax. Um, you could put the wax on top though they do adhere best to paint or raw wood. So if you want an antique look like this, um, where I would be putting glaze on top and then seal with tough coat, you can do that because it's water-based. Hope that makes sense. We do have the surface prep guide as well on our website and uh, all of the tutorials for the products kind of uh, share what's compatible and what's not. Really just look out for oil-based versus water-based. <clears throat> And you use vanilla frosting to whitewash. Nice, yes. Um, we got a lot of popular whites. I'd say vanilla frosting is an easy antique off-white. Um, cheesecake is our creamy, old-fashioned white, I would say. Definitely more of a yellow tone. So if you want that, that cream, almost a beige, go for that. Um, we've also got crinoline, which is kind of a page white with a very, very slight pink tone. It's a nice modern one. But then simplicity is the bright, bright white. So that's perfect um, if you've got a nice like Ikea style or Scandinavian kind of white colors going on in your house. The bright white. And you can put glaze on all of them. Um, a slightly different white will look different under smoky quartz. I think we did two examples. Uh, Vanilla frosting and simplicity are on the samples page if you want to see what those look like with glazes on them. Um, oops, forgot a spot up here. Don't forget to keep commenting, um, and if you've missed this video and you're watching later, don't worry, you can always comment to win um, within 24 hours of it being live. We'll post it right after we're done. And if you missed the draw or you didn't win, um, we always do something like this with almost every video. So just keep watching, subscribe, like this video if you're enjoying it so far, I'd love to know. Um, share a comment with me if you would do something similar. I don't really paint a lot of neutrals or whites. I, I really love the bright colors or the dark gem tones. Um, I like going a little crazy with color. 
but there's something really nice about just a classic um, grayish or a white finish. Now, if you're um, working at home and you don't want to get your table dirty or um, anything, work with a drop cloth or prop the table up on um, paint cans. That's what I do. Just make sure the piece, of course, isn't too heavy to support that. Works great. Just forgot that outside edge there. Oops. Don't want to let it dry in clumps. If you get any unwanted texture or you weren't going for the uh, crosshatch look, you can always use fine grit. 220 paper works like a charm. I often do that anyways, just for that super smooth look. Um, if you don't like that matte feel, just when it's all dry and when you're all done your project, uh, before you wax or anything like that, just uh, give it a 220 scuff sand. Wipe up the debris and it's very, very soft. You could even, if you wanted a more shabbier effect, just thinking, because it's so nice and distressed down there, you could sand and then glaze, or um, glaze and then sand, if you wanted more of a shabbier look. Um, just keep in mind that glaze uh, isn't, um, isn't a durability product, it just is just for effect. So if you are looking for that um, added protection, make sure you um, finish up with wax or a sealant, or something like hemp oil. Just trying to get right underneath. Um, I'm not too worried about the underside. Um, let me know in the comments if you like to paint in the underside. I'm always curious. I know that if someone's working on a buffet and you think it might uh, be a room divider, it's always good to paint the back, but let me know. I'm always curious if people like to paint the backs or the part that you don't typically see on furniture. Sometimes it's a waste of paint, I, I agree, but it could be a, a nice finishing touch if you're selling the piece or it's very special. Really thin coats on the bottom, as always. Oh, nice. Garage sales will be announced that summer. Uh, where are you, Mary? Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> Huge trouble looking for more treasures. Absolutely, I. <laughs> it was it was nice back in like not back in the day, um, but when you could only bring cash to a thrift store, you were limited in how much you could buy. Now it's most of them take debit or credit, and there you go. There's there's your paycheck spent. Um, <laughs> cannot wait to be shopping again. Neighborhood garage sales. That's where the best stuff is found, really. My mom finds the best stuff, like this one. She does a lot of the shopping, I think, for me. <laughs> so I didn't tape off the feet here, but if I'm quick, I can wipe the paint off those metal feet pretty easily. If you are intentionally trying to paint metal, I suggest giving it a scuff sand or using the bonding primer, uh, like I did for the top. Any tricky, non-porous surface, go ahead and try and sand or prime. Do a little scratch test before you go ahead with the rest of the project if you're really worried. You don't want to paint the whole thing and then find out it, it didn't quite adhere because of the um, original surface. But this one, I prepped nice and good. It's adhering and soaking in nicely. Just gotta get it back. Always paint the undersides. Look at his practice. That is a good idea. And actually, uh, another note, if you are trying out a new technique and you're not quite sure, and you don't have a sample board on hand, or you're not sure what it will look like with that particular wood or style, um, go ahead and paint the discrete area of the piece. Start with the back of the legs. Um, if you're trying out wax for the first time, always maybe not start right smack in the center. Um, just a discrete area is a good place to test anything out. Best part with glaze, if I over glaze this project later, I can always paint over it. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Just wait for everything to dry and go over it again. Oop, mindful of the nice cloth feet. I love these feet. Um, they've got a nice tarnish to them that I'm not going to mess with. Um, 
But if I wanted to, I could add a bit of metallic cream just to brighten them up, make them look new. But the whole point is to age this piece, so that's what I'm going for. Just going to get the underside again. Um, I think I can do one more coat on the top, so I'm going to. <laughs> and then I want to briefly show you just how um, the tough coating for this table went uh, behind me. That was part two, or part three, I guess, of the project that I've been working on last week. Be sure to check that out, um, the cranberry sauce and table, or coffee table. Absolutely love it. All right, yeah. Second coat is just gonna cover really nicely. Um, there was some gold detail on this that didn't even sand off, so I was curious how that was gonna go painting it, and it, I can't even see it. Two coats and you can't see that gold film stuff that they put on these things. And working in the same direction, kind of want it smoother on the top. Doesn't matter too much. I stand on the tippy toes for this one. Does anybody have a piece like this at home? Let me know. Um, I thought display table when I saw it, but maybe you have something like this in your living room. I'd love to see or know how you like to keep it styled um, if you've painted it. There's a few things in my house that I won't paint. Um, I've got an old magazine rack, the veneer is chipping, but I like, I like the old weird wood color that it has, so I'm never going to paint it. I originally wanted to do fresh mustard, but yeah, this might have been one that I, that I wouldn't have painted. But I really want to see that farmhouse look with a stencil. So if you've got one of these, let me know. I'm curious. Or something similar. Um, gonna get the back. Okay. Found one on Facebook Market. Nice. The, the round tables aren't my style either, Cindy. Um, it looks good now that it's painted, like I'm seeing it. Um, when I sanded it, I was more interested, but when it just looked like it on its own, I'm sure if I saw this in a thrift store, I might even keep walking, unless I saw those feet first, because they are just so interesting. I'm really into to that. It looks very pretty. But it is kind of a, a unique shape. Not quite popular anymore. But that's where paint comes in. It changes the look entirely. Not hiding, just trying to get the back here. <laughs> All right. Any spots missed, I'm just gonna catch with a second coat. I wanna give everything a good chance to dry before I go in with smoky quartz, because when you go to apply a wet coating on top of this, you don't wanna bring the paint back up. So if you go to glaze a painted project, maybe just give it a couple of hours before you do that. Um, but I think I have plans to use this stencil. You may have seen it in all the other videos. I, I use this one a lot. Um, I think I'm just gonna do little corners since I painted over all that detail. So it might have like a bohemian farmhouse style. I think people can do that. <laughs> Getting inspired, I know. It's like the, the plan changes about five times and I love it. Um, so very excited. Subscribe to catch what happens on this one next. We're gonna let this dry. I'm going to push it off to the side a bit, try not to knock it over, and I just want to show this one. I guess I should bring this closer if you want to see what I'm talking about. So there's, oops, there's a little quick shot painted right over. That's two coats of soiree. Look at that. Nice. Um, at this point, I could distress a little bit, then add the glaze, but I'm going to wait just a bit. Um, that's the table that I did in... Um, a couple of past projects. Look at that tough coat shine. That's a couple of coats. I did three. Um, someone had a great question in an email recently. They asked um, if you um, miss a spot, is it, is it um, just one coat? Should you be going over a second time? That's why I do a third coat. Um, you'll find the first pass over porous and matte paint kind of has a bit of a drag to it, but when you apply that second coat, you already are halfway to that satin shine. So, oops, where's my sponge? 
if I'm making sense, follow along. <laughs> um, just a quick pass across um, is a lot easier the second time around. Um, so I like to just do kind of halfway, not try, wait for that to dry, go in with a second coat across, and then if I miss any spots um, where I think there's only one coat instead of two, I go in with a third coat, and it's very easy to apply that third coat. So just a quick tip, and you'll note, no blushing. It is a, a nice glazed top, so I was worried about that because if um, I did get any blushing or streaking because of my overworking, um, I might have had to sand some of those areas, but I really, really, really like it. Um, any sanding with really fine grit, some folks do like to sand in between their top coats. Um, I haven't very often. It doesn't really, it doesn't scratch up the finish. Uh, it definitely makes it a lot smoother, sometimes even shinier, some might say. But that's a, that's a tough coat on the bottom, tough coat on the top. I wanted a high gloss, very durable surface. Um, this table's gonna get used a lot and it's got a very nice shine that I'm very happy with. So that's, that's that. If you wanna see how um, we did this, Check out part one, two, and three. <laughs> I love the red finish. It's uh, easily one of my go-tos. That's the second time. I'm probably gonna do it many more times. All right. Sorry about this, that's uh, falling down on me here. <laughs> Getting a tour of the room. Okay, so just gonna give you a, another heads up to comment to win below in this video. Um, just any comment at all, maybe it be paint related or you have a question, we'll still answer those. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to be doing, um, finishing up this project I think next week. Uh, I might add that stencil beforehand just so I can show you the glazing process. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, hope to see you there. Um, check out those other parts if you want to see how I made that red table. And I hope you guys have a really good, uh, get back in there, hope you have a really good rest of your day and happy painting. Bye!